excited to be speaking with uh, Akiko Sakamoto uh, from B-Trax. Um, would you mind just quickly doing an introduction? Yeah, um, I'm Akiko. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, I'm working as a UX researcher at B-Trax right now. Uh, yeah, I'm originally from Tokyo and currently in San Francisco for a business trip. But yeah, All right. Me. That's cool. Congrats on uh, five weeks in San Francisco for a client project. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what part of what you've been working on mm -hmm. is design thinking. Yes. Or, like workshops with clients, right? Mm -hmm. So um, can you tell us, when you work with clients, and you're mm -hmm. mostly working with Japanese clients, right? Right now, yes. Right now. So how much of it are you starting from zero in terms of helping them understand how design plays a part in mm -hmm. product or service ideation? So like the, this project, the project I'm just uh, working on, uh, they basically have <clears throat> almost zero knowledge of design thinking. I think they have like general idea, mm -hmm. but most of them are coming from non-design background. So um, they so have, some, have some idea of like what it could be, but mm -hmm. uh, we're basically teaching them starting from zero. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And, and it kind of reminds me of something that Brandon Hill, the mm -hmm. uh, CEO of B-Trax, likes to say, we are all designers. Yeah. Um, I sometimes giggle at that because I am, like, my role has nothing to do with design technically. Mm -hmm. I mean, I design proposals and things like that. Yeah, but yeah. But when I'm comparing myself to actual designers, mm -hmm. um, I don't really <laughs> endeavor to create things as much. Mm -hmm. right? I just ask our designers to work on it. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I'm going to jump back for a sec because we were just talking about like purchasing habits and decision making. Mm -hmm. And while you explained it in a way of like, you know, sometimes it, it may not even have uh, like in terms of use, mm -hmm. it, you may not be buying it for that. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I feel like Japanese are really focused on is mm -hmm. quality. Yeah. Right. So regard, I would say regardless of the type of product or service, does that always mm -hmm. play a part in your decision making? I mean, the quality? Yes. Yeah, I think like quality is like something I really care. Like w when it comes to if I buy something, I, I do care uh, about the quality. And also like when I deliver something as a, you know, like a designer or researcher or whatever, I do care about the quality of my work. If mm -hmm. it's uh, worth for the clients or, you know, whoever receives that. Um, I think it's a... It's, uh, part of the responsibility I feel. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think probably like Japanese people tend to uh, care quality sometimes too much mm -hmm. or just like we don't, even when we don't charge for it, we feel like it's less possible. Right. Uh, but that's something I kind of proud of and admire about Japanese culture that people are um, trying to make the quality higher, not only for the money, but it's, it's more like for the people who consume or use it. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's like definitely something we really care, I think, and I do care. Yeah, yeah. No, I see that, and uh, I sometimes, you know, struggle with designers because I'm, I'm mm -hmm. like, is it good enough? Mm -hmm. Right. It doesn't have to be perfect every time. Yeah. And obviously, you want the client or whoever you're creating a product or service for, you want the end user or the end client to appreciate it, to mm -hmm. feel like they're getting what they paid for. Yeah. Um, but some of the designers I've worked with, I've been like, all right, we have a timeline that we have to achieve certain milestones. Yeah. So, which, speaking of this, like, we're talking about your experience mm -hmm. as a Japanese person. Yeah. Right? Uh, but you're one of the interesting people on the team who has lived and studied abroad, mm -hmm. in Europe, Europe specifically. Yes. Uh, you're Japanese, but you also travel to the U.S. for work quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, how has your experiences kind of paved the way for where you are today? Tell us a little bit about your background. Good question. I, I don't know. I, so I was born in Tokyo, and I, I, um, my family was, is not rich, so I, I just like went to uh, like normal public schools, mm -hmm. and then um, I entered university, and I studied in Netherlands for a year. Mm -hmm. um, and even the education system is like totally different, mm -hmm. uh, especially in Netherlands, it's like really... How can I say? Um, more like individualistic, I'd say. So uh, in in Japan, like especially at school, um, my experience has been had been like always really collective, mm -hmm. like group oriented. So um, if you 
feel like you want to say something. I uh, we always care. Like in in Japan, like I always cared. Uh, it's gonna, you know, taking other people's time. Or like I don't I don't want it to see like oh, okay, this this girl is you know just like get trying to get attention. I I really didn't want to be like that. So I was always trying to be silent and you know like be a part of the group and yep. just like didn't trying to say what I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but in Netherlands, like it's totally opposite. You need to be you know, like show what your your opinion is or just like be independent and be individual. Um, so like in the classroom, you I was always ask like what I think and what was my opinion and what was my interpretation of the text. And that, that was like a totally different. And at the beginning, it was so hard for me to yeah. even just like speak out because uh, so I, I had the education in English in Netherlands. So uh, it was not in Dutch, but still it was my second language. And I was so afraid to make mistake. Uh, and then, like, I, I wasn't used to speak out in front of a lot of people and, like, speaking out different opinion from other people. Uh, but um, going through that experience, I, I, I really changed my mind that, like, I can express myself and other people listen to me. And uh, I think that also, like, had a really good impact on my, um, how I work right now mm -hmm. as a more, like, um, global person to you know like work with a lot of different people from different backgrounds uh i can i can balance myself being more like japanese or being more a little bit like westernized uh in a way but like yeah i, I, I guess experience like those different cultures definitely making like who i am right now yeah. so yeah all right and when the, the akiko i know is when you talk you speak your mind uh -huh. right like it's a very western way when we speak yeah which Brings up the point when you speak in Japanese, mm -hmm. do you uh, like shift the way you talk, or do you become more Japanese? Even when I speak Japanese, I'm more like I think compared to other Japanese people, I I, I think I'm more like kind of be a little bit individualistic or more like mm -hmm. Westernized. But uh, I do change how I behave and how I talk depends on the context or right. in this occasion because. Uh, I do want to respect and I'm proud of Japanese culture, but at yeah. the same time, I, I also like have some um, feeling like we should change a little bit yeah. uh, because, um, yeah, sometimes I also know like toxic part of Japanese culture. So uh, I kind of trying to balance myself and sometimes want to be a little bit more like liberated version of myself mm -hmm. to, to letting others to speak out because um, that's like not about culture, but like especially I'm also like being a female, um, and I also want to other Japanese female to be a little bit more comfortable to be themselves. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, intentionally I kind of adjust how I behave. I think. And how has that work style? You've so you've worked at WeWork, IKEA, yeah. House, yes, uh, also some Japanese startups, yes, in different roles. Like I know that different you roles, know, yes. Previously, you weren't necessarily in design or yeah, research. yeah, yeah. My first role was at HL, and I also did community management. So yeah, like I was kind of exploring different things. And and the way you communicated though, mm -hmm. um, has it consistently been the same, or have you noticed that? through each company or through each role you've changed mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Like especially especially at WeWork, my role is customer facing job and I, yeah. I, I always like and I know it's more like hospitality job. So um I was really conscious about who I talk to because mm -hmm. I also needed to talk to like really high position people like CEO or something. Mm -hmm. Uh at the same time like there are also like startup people, you know, um so I I just like um, see where I am, yeah. what, what the occasion is, and just like adjust like a little bit how I behave because it's it's not about how can I say like I I do want to be respectful respectful that person, but at the same time I want to be who I am. Right. So like I don't feel like I'm how can I say like totally changing myself, but yeah. it's more like adjustment to be like respectful enough or just like be responsible enough to my role but at the same time i also want to be authentic so right. yeah, yeah. Like read the room kind of mm -hmm, understanding mm -hmm. uh it's 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 become more of a superpower for you i would imagine since you have mm -hmm. experience with living abroad yeah uh, especially i mean when we talk about culture shock going from yeah. japan mm -hmm. to the netherlands yeah they are fairly opposite ways yeah. of communicating like yeah. uh, it, it reminds me of ted lasso i don't know if you've seen that show 
but mm -hmm. one of the soccer players is Dutch. Mm -hmm. And he is the player on the team who speaks his mind, uh -huh. I would say, to, not to a fault, but like yeah. he's super uber honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? The, the Dutch coach is like, that's yeah. like super straightforward, super yeah. honest, and yeah, yeah. it's so. just the opposite. So sure. you never know which side of Akiko we're going to get if, in a conversation. Um, yeah. Especially, I mean, personally, right? Like mm -hmm. work, obviously, you know which, what, how, to, how to communicate and, so, and yeah. support your team, actually. Yeah, but I don't really change my opinion itself. I just like change how I communicate that opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, well, like for sure, like when I feel like it's not the right occasion to this thing, then like, I kind of try to, you know, like keep it in my mind but I, I just like don't really change my opinion itself it yeah. depends on the person or um, in, the, in the occasion I just like kind of trying to adjust things so um, I'm just like trying to be be myself always but just like you know this be, being respectful yeah and you talked a little bit about how we work your customer facing mm -hmm. and community building yeah. and since you've changed roles to be more design focused yeah You've gotten involved or started communities in Tokyo, right? Yes, yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Tell me about the design community in Tokyo. Yeah, um, so I've been leading a community called uh, Designers Breakfast Club, which I, we, uh, me and other friends started one and a half year ago. Mm -hmm. And we we didn't uh, intend to make a community. It just started like, um, so I... I, I'm not originally working as a designer. I, I just explore a different job and uh, but I was always um, interested in design and wanted to be a designer. So um, during the pandemic, I decided to, why not I trying like what I really wanted to do? So I decided to study UX design. And mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning, I just like found a really good mentor and studied really hard while I was still keeping my full time job. And I just like um, talking to my friends that I started something new. I was just like started learning design, which makes me really happy. And then like some of my friends are like saying to me like oh my another friend is also learning design mm -hmm. and can I introduce my friend to you because they are looking for someone to talk to and I was like yeah for sure and then that happens uh, with multiple friends mm -hmm. so like they introduced me different friends and I was like oh why don't we just like meet up together because I have another friends like who I need to meet up mm -hmm. anyway so um, I I think that at the first time I met two friends of friends okay um, at a cafe and then like we just like how to chat, what are you doing? And then like they are like, oh, it's my first time for me to, you know, having this kind of conversation. It's so empowering, it's so encouraging. And why don't we just like uh, having a space to exchange all the information, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like design it at the thing. And I was like, oh yeah, why not we create a Slack channel? Mm -hmm. And then like as a community manager, I I've been uh, managing a lot of Slack channels. So that's some of like what I've done before. So I was like, oh, let me just like set up and I just yeah. like make all the channels and stuff. And then after that, like somehow I was attending a lot of event, design related events. And then like when I found someone, I, you know, like kind of get make connection and I became friends. And I, I was like, oh, do you want to join our group? And then like now it's over 50 members. Wow. Uh, so like we, we like um, basically monthly we do like a blunch gathering, like having breakfast together mm -hmm. and just like chat about um, design or whatever. Um, comes up to our mind but yeah it's been like really fun to um communicating with other people and like, we have like really junior or like even like people who are not designer yet and okay. also like senior designers so on and it's like we don't have any requirements to be a be that member so anyone can join if they are they are interested in design or having passion for design so yeah it's really fun and what is the uh... Are they mostly expats? Or are they mostly Japanese people? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Now, like, we have more international people okay. and not necessarily expats. Uh, some people are coming as a, a working holiday, but uh, still continue working as a designer. Or uh, there's a person who has a um, Japanese wife sometimes, mm -hmm. or just like uh, been working in Japan. Um, can well, like there are some expats as well, but like not more like just moved here and find a job by okay. themselves. And yeah, there, it's just like there are different kinds of people. And are you finding that designers in, we'll say Tokyo, because that's where you're based, mm -hmm. um, especially if they are international, mm -hmm. do they, 
what is the kind of table stakes? Do they need to speak Japanese? Um, that's a really good right. point. So that's what most of my friends are struggling that like in Japan, uh, the ability to speak Japanese is like cool, like you know really important. And right. uh, compared to um, engineers, I think designers needs to communicate more. Right. So uh, a lot of my friends. Like international designers' friends are struggling to get a job because of the language barrier, mm -hmm. uh, so it's a it's a huge requirement. But, but still, like somehow there are some international companies or like um, yeah, international companies or even Japanese company kind of trying to hire um, like foreign designers. Mm -hmm. um, even they don't speak that much Japanese, but it's really there. So um, yeah, it's it's I think it's still been an issue. Got it. And when we talk about designers, like you have a design community. Mm -hmm. A designer, just saying the name, mm -hmm. is fairly broad, right? Like, so True. is there a specific focus? Because you're not, I mean, mm -hmm. you're doing design research. Yes. Right? I also use UI UX, like UI. making UI as well in, in like, um, as my side gig. And, and, and now that you've been in the States for a while, mm -hmm. um, and, and you've been here before, and you've lived in Europe, what does the design community look like in Japan versus like what you see here? Um, it's a good question. And like, as you mentioned, like design, the term design is like really broad. Yeah. And I'm more like in tech industry, like digital related or more like tech, tech design industry. And mm -hmm. I also like um, have friends like more like uh, interior design mm -hmm. or, you know, furniture design. Like there are lots of different um, field of design and I'm more like in tech side and um, I don't know like in, in Japan like the thing is so there is a language barrier so I belong to both like Japanese designers community and the yeah. international designers community and there yeah there is like a not a wall but like because of the language barrier there are like some people who only belong to the Japanese Japanese designers community and like international designers community mm -hmm. uh, and then like I think um, US or Europe for example if you are in tech industry like not everyone but many people are comfortable to speak in English so right. I think uh, the, the community itself is more inclusive and having more diversity and yeah have like more different nationalities and such uh, so yeah, it's a bit different I guess okay. and I think I'm, I'm actually really interested to see how you answer this question. Mm -hmm. When you introduce yourself uh -huh. in Japan yeah. versus the U.S. as a designer, yeah. how does that conversation usually go? How does how does it differ? Right? Like if you say, "Hi, I'm Akiko. I'm a designer mm -hmm. at Beatrix," and you're meeting somebody yeah. in the U.S. versus in Japan. Well, I'm not sure uh, if it's that. I think it's always depends on the person who right. I talk to. Um, but probably, I think in Japan, uh, the second or third question they ask would be like, oh, which company are you working for? Right. Or, you know, like we, we tend to care about like where we are working. But probably, I think um, in, in more like Western country, they are more like interested in, OK, what exactly do you do? Or like what kind, what, what kind of project do you do? Right. You know, like what do we do? Like they care more like what I do. Um, so, yeah, probably it's a bit different. but. Yeah, it's also like depends on the person right. I talk to. Um, so yeah. Got it. And I mean, we're B tracks San Francisco based a tech hub, right? So yeah. um, I'm guessing the way you have these conversations mm -hmm. is much different than Tokyo. Like mm -hmm. uh, in terms of Tokyo has technology companies, but when you're meeting people, they're not necessarily all working at tech companies. No, no, no. Right here, probably uh, quite a few are San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And so, what have you really enjoyed mm -hmm. about being in the Bay Area and kind of learning from the design community here? Mm -hmm. Well, like design community, in terms of design community, I would say I haven't had enough communication with, like interaction with the community itself because mm -hmm. I'm mostly um, interacting with my clients or like my companies. Uh, but and being in Bay Area, uh, it's just like, it's kind of crazy. Like all the company I know, like even like the, the, the all the products I've been a user mm -hmm. 
we can see all the company's name in the street and like it's uh it's like just feeling surely like you know all the products are made here and you know people are walking for, towards that company and also all the concepts or you know like uh, whole things just happening in this small city like it's like compared to Tokyo like uh, San Francisco is pretty small yeah uh, so like everything is happening here and um, yeah like all the talented people are gathered in this city and it's, it's just like feels crazy how uh, San Francisco you know, has everything which um, spread to whole like not entire world but like you mm -hmm. know like really really like wide scale of the world so mm -hmm. it's just crazy last question yeah who would you like to see interviewed for the global design talk by Butrax youtube channel wow it's a it's a hard one um not sure or who I, do you look up to i guess mm. yeah as i mentioned i haven't uh explored that much in the design community in the bay area mm -hmm. except for the people in Butrax yeah. At the same time, there are lots of people coming from other, you know, countries and cities. So yeah. I, I'd be happy to know like their story and why why they chose um, to live here and like doing um, UX kind of related stuff and what was their motivation mm -hmm. and what makes them motivated and yeah and struggle as well. So yeah. All right. Well, we'll find some folks and uh, yeah. If anybody comes to mind, please just let us know. I will. I will. Thank you so much, Akiko. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.